Hello and welcome to Manchester. And in this video, I present my top 50 best and worst modern buildings in Manchester, starting with the bad ones. Number 50, the Arndale Centre by Hugh Wilson and Lewis Womersley, 1972 to 1979. Ugly and far too big, but as a shopping centre, very successful. Number 49, the Library Walk Link Building by Simpson Hall, 2015. Ruins the effect of the two heritage buildings and blocks the beautiful passageway between them. Number 48, Piccadilly Pavilion by Tadao Ando, 2002. Simply ugly and reminded me immediately of the Berlin Wall. In 47th place, number one Piccadilly Gardens by Allies and Morrison, 2003. Built on a green space, it blocks the view of the historic facades. Number 46, the flats in Northern 2014. This apartment building appeared in the suburb of Northern the design is not bad, but here in a village it's too big and dominating. The building is bigger than in the original plans. And now on to the better ones. Number 45, Piccadilly Plaza by Covell Matthews and Partners, 1965. Many hate it, but I find it exciting and futuristic. Number 44, Bernard House, Piccadilly Plaza, 1965. A building with a very interesting roof. Sadly, it was demolished in 2001. Number 43, the Beetham Hilton Tower by Ian Simpson Architects, 2007. Number 42, the Trafford Centre by Chapman Taylor and Leach Roads Walker, 1998. Architects criticise it, but millions of visitors seem to love it. Number 41, The Mathematics Tower by Scherer and Hicks, 1968. A nice building, but no longer compatible with a modern university and demolished in 2005. It was replaced by number 40, University Place by John McCaslin and Partners, 2008. At the university, they call it the Tin Can. And now on to the good ones. Number 39, Withinshaw Park Tennis and Bowls Pavilion by City Architect L.C. Howitt, 1960. A tiny masterpiece of modern architecture. Number 38, Number 1 Deansgate by Ian Simpson, 2002. A nice place to live, but not so good if you value your privacy. Number 37, Furnace House, former Manchester Liners, Leach, Rhodes and Walker, 1969. In the former Manchester docks, it reminds me of Liberty Hall in Dublin. Number 36, the 1962 terminal at Manchester Airport by L. C. Howitt and Besant Roberts. As a child, I found it exciting and futuristic. Here's a photo of mine from 1973. Number 35, Manchester Airport ATC Tower by CPM Architects, 2013. Impressive and similar to other towers at airports all over the world. Number 34, Pall Mall Court by Brett and Pollen, 1969. Number 33, 55 King Street by Casson, Conda and Partners, 
1966 and 1969. Number 32, The City of Manchester Stadium by Arup, 2002. Number 31, Owens Park Tower by Building Design Partnership, 1968. Number 30, Peter House by Ansel and Bailey, 1958. Its facade curves outwards and opposite is number 29, number 1 St Peter's Square by Glen Howells Architects, 2015. An elegant modern building, its facade curves inwards. Number 28, the Renata TV Building by Ralph Tubbs, 1956. A monument to the golden era of British TV. Number 27, The Lowry Hotel by Consark Design Architects, 2001. Number 26, The Contact Theatre by Alan Short and Associates, 1999. A beautiful, interesting and rather crazy building. Number 25, Islington Wharf by Broadway Malian, 2000. Futuristic with great views. Number 24, Oxford Road Station by William Robert Headley and Max Clendinning, 1960. Made out of wood and reminiscent of the Sydney Opera House. Number 23, The Royal Exchange Theatre by Levitt Bernstein. 1976. A building within a building. It looks like the lunar module. Number 22. The Bridgewater Hall by Renton Howard Wood Levin. 1996. The new home of the Halle Orchestra, which was founded in 1854 by the German-British musician Sir Charles Halle. Number 21, The Toast Rack, Hollings Campus, by Leonard Cecil Howitt, 1960. It was a college for catering, and so form represents function. Number 20, Manchester Cancer Research Centre, by Capita Simmons, 2015. Number 19, The National Graphene Institute, by Jessica and Wells. 2015. It has facets like a jewel. Number 18. The Key Bar by Stevenson Bell. 1998. It won prizes, but as a bar it wasn't successful and it was demolished in 2007. Number 17. MMU Business School and Student Hub by F. CB Studios, 2012. A very impressive building made out of glass. Number 16, Stockport Pyramid, 1992. Now an icon of Stockport. Number 15, Manchester International Office Centre, former Reynold Chain, by Cruikshank and Seward, 1955. Near the airport, a very early example of modern office architecture. Number 14, New Piccadilly Station, BDP, 2002. In my opinion, the best modern station building in the UK. I use it every day. Number 13, Gateway House by Richard Seifert and Partners, 1969. It was recently renovated and today it looks great. Number 12, The Lowry by Michael Wilford, 2000. With its metal facade and crazy shapes, it's unmistakable. Number 11, The Maths and Social Sciences Building by Cruikshank and Seward, 1968. For me as a child, this was a symbol of modernity. Number 10, The Reynold Building by W.A. Gibbon of Cruikshank and Seward. 1962. A masterpiece of modern architecture.
Number 9. Hexagon Tower by Richard Seifert, 1973. This futuristic building looks astonishingly like the modern PC Tower. Number 8. The Daily Express Building by Sir Owen Williams, 1939. Visionary and future orientated, unlike the paper which moved out many years ago. The design influenced Sir Norman Foster. Number 7. Home by Mecca New, 2015. A home for cinema, theatre and art. It looks great by day and by night. Number 6. The Siemens Building by Buttress Architects, 1989. Located in South Manchester, it's influenced by the Bauhaus. Number 5. The Imperial War Museum by Daniel Liebeskind, 2002. It represents a world shattered by war. Number 4. The Civil Justice Centre by Denton Corker Marshall, 2008. Very big, very expensive, but in my opinion, a modern masterpiece. Number 3, Urbis by Ian Simpson, 2001. A great building, very exciting. My Manchester megaphoto was displayed here. Since 2012, it's the National Football Museum. Number 2, One Angel Square by 3D Reed, 2013. For many, Manchester's best modern building, but my number one is The CIS Tower by Gordon Tate, 1962. Outside and inside superb. Influenced by the Inland Steel Building Chicago by Skidmore, Owings and Merrill, 1956. Since 2004, the CIS Building is a huge solar project. So what's your favourite building in Manchester? Please write it in the comments below. In my opinion, Manchester needs a big visionary building project of international significance with a viewing platform. So thank you very much for watching, please like and subscribe and I'll see you again soon in Manchester.